The special assistant to the Lagos State Governor on Health, Dr. Tunde Ajayi, has disclosed that six of the patients at the Infectious Disease Hospital have recovered. He added that these patients will be discharged soon. This is good news, considering the fact that the number of reported cases have been rising daily since the uh, coronavirus was discovered in Nigeria. We will also be looking at plans by the Lagos State Government to discontinue 566 cases being prosecuted by the police that are non-active in this time of coronavirus. Still with me in the studio is Dr. Uche Okorocha. Thank you very much Thank for you staying for with us. And we also have joining us via phone still Raymond Nkanebe. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, Raymond. Uh, let's get to it. Let's start with the part about the good news. Let's start from there. Right. Six people recovered. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that we'll get to get the details of that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you? I mean, it's a huge relief, right? Uh, it's a huge relief. I'm happy for the individuals that recovered. I'm happy for their families. Uh, and it's, a good news. it's good news to us because it means that uh, we're able to nurse people back to good health in our circumstances, right? Okay. So, yeah, so, so quite happy. And in any case, uh, they need to free up space and free up uh, resources. Uh, so whoever comes in uh, will be able to get similar kind of attention. Uh, well, there are some, uh, you know, there will always be pessimists that would say that these people, they, no magic was done, there was no vaccine. Their immune system just probably fought off or their bodies just fought off the virus. What do you say to that? So there's a whole lot of uh, cynicism. This is what I found out at this time flying around and that's not what we need at this time. Um, so it's a good thing to verify whatever information and not just to automatically push something and circulate it and attack uh, the efforts of those who are working so hard, making um, great sacrifices to keep us all safe. I can tell you as a professional, when you say supportive treatment, okay, there's no vaccine yet approved, there's no uh, magic bullet. That's true, but supportive treatment means a whole lot. It means nursing, that's why I use the expression, nursing yes. the person back to health. Um, they need personal attention. Um, they need uh, to be helped to breathe properly. They need for their symptoms to be managed. They need to be nourished. That was still and, work and putting. There's a whole lot of work going on. They need a lot of attention. And think about it, um, the medicine, whether it's um, you know, a vaccine which is administered so they don't fall sick, it's just an injection you give it and hopefully it works. And if there is a medicine like an anti-malaria in case it's malaria, it's either a tablet or an injection. So the care is really not much about giving medication. Medication is yeah. much more than that. It's, much, it's, it's about nursing care, it's about professional care by different specialists who come to assess the individual, assess different aspects of uh, the care that this individual needs. Okay, um, I'm told we have Raymond on the line. Uh, Raymond, thank you for joining us again. Thank you, Felicity. All right, let's start with uh, the case of uh, review of cases that are being managed by the Nigerian police. Um, they have recommended that um, government should reduce the number of what was the language now, uh, decongest the non-criminal cases in the state because it is pretty high all the way to 2015. What's your take on that? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe for, let me first of all uh, state that this step by the state government has no connection with the pandemic. Yes, we're aware. We're aware, okay. but it, it, is, it comes at a time when we have the pandemic and there are questions about the welfare the of these prisoners in congested spaces. Exactly. Well, um, the step by the, uh, the move by the Lagos State Government through uh, the Attorney General of the Federation, my very learned colleague, um, is a step that has, come in, that has come at a very auspicious time because over the years we've battled the cases of, or the issue of congestion of prisons. And then most times when you go to these, some of these prisons, you meet awaiting trial inmates 
who are being charged for very negligible offenses, but who have stayed there for excess of three, four, five years. In most cases, in excess of the statutory punishment for the offense they are alleged to have committed. So uh, the, the, when this government came on board in Lagos State, he set up a committee headed by the former Solicitor General of the, of the Lagos State, and Mr. Fola Atowore, who has saddled responsibility to look at the, the profile of uh, some of these inmates in, in prisons and see if there's a way we could withdraw some of these cases so we decongest the prisons and then unbundle the criminal justice system. And what we have seen today is the fruit of that effort that has led to the, what will be the, the release of, if potential release of some 566 inmates. Now, this step is constitutional uh, because when you look at section 174 of the constitution, the attorney general of the federation, or in this case of a state, has the power to discontinue uh, a criminal charge against any person accused of committed the offense. And upon such discontinuance, it's in the case of, at the magistrate court level, it might amount to either a discharge or an acquittal. An acquittal means you can no longer be arraigned, while a discharge means you may, you may still be arraigned some other day if the state thinks in that, uh, in that manner. But from this particular step, we are not seeing the likelihood of the state coming back tomorrow to say, oh, we want to now prosecute or proceed against this person. This is a clear case of decongesting the prisons and also unbundling the criminal justice uh, system. Because lawyers go to court every day to defend some of these, sorry, to prosecute some of these um, inmates. You understand? So you are running staff, uh, lawyers going to court, reporting. So when you take the strike from these cases off, it's unbundled the system so that lawyers can focus on more critical cases. All right, let, let me interject and, and ask. The, these all sounds well, I mean, a good move. But why does it take so long? for such issues to come up? Because, I mean, you said it yourself that some of them have been there spending more time than they would have served if they were, yes. they were convicted. Um, um, convicted. So why yes. does it take so long for these matters to come up? Well, the thing is this, most of these cases, they suffer, ish, they suffer the problem of what we call lack of proof of evidence. Um, criminal trials or trials generally turn on evidence. So when some of these persons are arrested by the police and the, uh, and the, the Ministry of Justice decides to prefer a charge, if they don't have the evidence to actually prosecute, they might stall some of these trials. You understand? So what is happening is a fallout of poor investigative uh, measures of Nigerian police investigating crimes before deciding whether we should prosecute or not. There is this haste between arrest and prosecution. And most times when you now go to court, there will be no evidence to proceed. You understand? Yeah. So for one reason or the other, the, the prosecutors continue to deter. Of course, uh, the way court sits, if matter comes up today, it might be adjourned to maybe under two, three months. And so time flies away. So it's a problem of poor investigation of um, offense or crime by law enforcement agents and also delay in the criminal justice process. How the wheel of justice grinds. It grinds rather very slowly here. So these are the concomitant factors that lead to this situation. Okay, let's see what happens with that. I needed to get your thoughts on that one before I go ahead and ask you uh, what the good news that six um, patients uh, that initially tested positive uh, for the coronavirus has now yeah. recovered. What does that do for you? Uh, well, uh, just like you pointed out, some bit of chair at last. That shows that um, um, there might be lights at the end of this tunnel. But uh, it also goes to support what scientists have said, that this disease is not as life-threatening as the media has uh, blown it out of proportion. 
You understand? Uh, so Why do you I, blame us? People are dying. <laughs> well, let's not go into that banter. But coming back to my point, it, 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 when you look at the numbers, as dire as the Italian scenario is, we are understanding that more persons have recovered from the disease than have died out of it or died from it. So it goes to give, uh, give us some bit of confidence that we can um, get through this. Uh, as my friend explained in the studio, perhaps some of these cases, their immune system develop and then the virus buckled under the weight of their reinvigorated immune system. So we hope to hear more of such cases, even though we continue to have a problem of limited testing. But with the arrival of Jack Ma's, um, 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 what would I call materials. it now? I hope we can expand the course of our testing. Yes. All right. Uh, Raymond, thank you uh, so much. But I'm not done with you yet. Don't go away. Um, let's talk to the doctor and away from the cherry news for a bit. Uh, there were some worrying um, comments by the State Commissioner for Health when he said that they're still trying to trace. Let me see if I have the number figure. 2,000. Initially, we heard they were tracing 1,300. Now, that figure has gone up to 2,000. Um, isn't it time? Because this question has been playing and playing around. Three, 2,000 people. These 2,000 people, we're not creating a worst case scenario like Raymond accused the media. But from what we know of the virus, the tendency is that if even five of these 2,000 people are infected, they in turn, not knowing that they are carrying this, will infect even more people. And we wouldn't know. So isn't it time for a lockdown? Um, okay, so I'll just have to say that I've learned a whole lot from Raymond tonight. So Raymond, <laughs> thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, so what the commissioner said is basically telling us that they have spread their net wide. Um, so how do you stop the spread of a disease? You spread your net really wide to all possible contacts and then um, keep them under surveillance. That's the way it works. So if you have a contact and then you want to know who else could that person possibly have infected over a period, so you keep an eye on them, you tell them to stay at home, and then you monitor them either uh, by visiting them by specially trained surveillance officers or you call them up on the phone and ask them questions. And if you have concerns, uh, enough to want to subject them to the testing, then you go ahead and test them. So th they are doing the right thing and um, Is it they need... Is not time for a lockdown in your opinion? Well, so, so here's the thing. We're tending towards that point. It, it just wouldn't surprise me if in the coming days, uh, for example, in Lagos State, uh, that the, the government comes out and says, um, we're going to have a lockdown for a certain period. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, it's brutal, it's painful, uh, but as I said uh, in an earlier uh, program uh, sometime during the week, it produces results. If people don't move, then the virus doesn't cross right. over from one person to another. Uh, however, we also have to realistically consider the consequences of a total lockdown at this time uh, and weigh that against the risk of not locking down. And then I am sure the government, I trust them to make the right judgment. Okay, um, Raymond, let me, let me ask you this, because that's been a reoccurring question. I see it on yes. social media. I hear people ask it. I want to get your perspective. I've asked this question before previous guest, and it's basically about the artisans, the people whose daily living depends on their daily hustle. We know there's a lot of those people here in Lagos. What would be the ripple effect? Uh, the doctor already has some concerns. What would be the ripple effect for these people? And how, in your opinion, can government cushion this effect so that these people, um, knowing that they're staying at home, they're not necessarily uh, going to starve to death? Well, uh, I agree absolutely that the effect of a lockdown will be devastating, uh, given our peculiar environment. You understand? But then I've been trying to look at how this government can manage the situation, as mean we are left with such an option. This is a country where we don't have any efficient data management. 
yesterday when uh, Mr. Atiku Abubakar said he's assisting with some 50 million naira for each household, the question arose as to how do you determine a household? How many houses in this country are properly addressed? You, you understand? So it's, it's uh, sometimes when you think about it, you don't even have, you can't figure out how this can be fully implemented to the latter so that the last man on the, on the pyramid can actually benefit. I'm from asking you to try, measures. Raymond. I'm asking you to try. These are tough times. If well, you were to have this. that, if you were to have that responsibility, let's assume that you have people around you that you might not be able. In our reality now, you said it. We don't have data, but these people have to be fed. What, in your opinion, or how, in your opinion, can we get to them? Okay. In that case, I will vote for. You see, this country, we have 774 local governments, and we have the smallest political units of this, of our democracy, uh, is at, at the world, or at the, at the, yeah, let me say, not putting you, let me say the world level. Okay. You understand? We have about 198,000 uh, poll, polling units. I, I, I mean, I might not have those numbers right. So I think the government, for those citizens who have, bank accounts and uh, who have BVN. If the government agrees to a particular amount, that could be paid into their account directly. All right, then Raymond, those, I, the, I, I, have, I have to interrupt. I, I have to interrupt you because we're really out of time. I'll just get the oh. final thoughts uh, of Dr. Uche on this. Okay. What's your submission at the end of the day? What do you see coming forward? So we've entered a phase of this outbreak where the numbers could increase rapidly beyond what we know today. That is what it is, okay? And that's not because the government has failed. Uh, this is the pattern, and we see that across the globe. So the question is, what should we be doing at this time? Let's listen to the experts, okay? Let's observe social distancing. Let's observe personal hygiene. And then I'm actually calling on um, private sector business leaders to support the efforts of the government at this time. I'm calling on individuals who are able to do so to support the efforts of the government in whatever way they can and hopefully we'll come out of this, uh, well, we'll come out of this fine. We definitely will come out of this. Right. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your thoughts and your time. Thank you, Felicity. And of course, Raymond, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure, thank you. Thank you. I guess that's where we will wrap things up for this segment. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be given my take to stay with us. Just like many Nigerians, I am concerned, deeply so, that President Mohamed Buhari is yet to physically take the lead on the global health pandemic caused by the coronavirus via a public broadcast. It is important now more than ever before as some key government officials test positive for the virus. However, I do not believe that governance structure has collapsed in this country as that would be a disservice to the many government officials who are working day and night to find ways to keep the people safe. I would rather encourage that conversations by well-meaning Nigerians at this time should be focused on creative suggestions on how the country can better tackle this pandemic. The COVID-19 virus is a global challenge, and if we must win, we have to fight it collectively. That's my take, and that's the program for tonight. Until next time, remember to maintain basic hygiene and the social distancing rule as advised. Please be well. Thanks again for watching.